Hello everyone, I'm Yu Xuan Huang. Today I'm going to talk about our work on the compressed circle technique and post quantum security of proof of sequential work. So this is a joint work with Kai Min Zhong, Serge Fear, myself, and Tai Nin Liao. First we're gonna talk about the quantum random oracle model, and then we give a brief summary of our results. As a commonly used technique, we talk about the lazy sampling in both classical and quantum settings. Finally, we discuss our results in more detail. So the random oracle model is a common way to analyze classical cryptography scheme that use a hash function. Here, hash functions are idealized into uniformly sampled function that everyone has access to. Putting this into the quantum settings, everyone can make the query in superposition. Contrary to the sequential query, we are in the setting of parallel query in which multiple data points could be asked for a single query round. A typical example problem in the random oracle model is a zero primitive problem which asks to find an input that is mapped to zero. It is well studied and understood in both classical and quantum settings. For example, when given parallel access to the random oracle, running Grover's search in parallel is known to be optimal. Another example problem in the random oracle model is the hash rate problem, which asks to find a sequence of input x0 to xq such that one is mapped to another. We refer to this as finding the hash q chain, and it is easy with q scratch queries, but expected to be hard with less than q scratch queries even if we are given parallel access to the random oracle. This is mainly because the data points being asked in a single query round are non-adaptive, which means they should not depend on their query output. The harness for the Hessian problem uh, is easy to show in the classical setting, but there hasn't been any quantum proof prior to our work. So what have we done? We offer a useful framework for analyzing such problems in the parallel query quantum random oracle model. Using our framework, one can prove quantum harness of this kind of problems using classical reasoning, and this works by lifting classical proof into quantum proof if in suitable form. For demonstration, we apply our framework into solving various example problems such as Simplifying existing proof, uh, such as the harness for zero primitive problem, and also obtain new bounds, such as for the collision finding problem and for the Q chain finding problem. The main application of our framework is that we give the first post quantum security proof of the PSW scheme or the proof of sequential work scheme constructed by Cohen and Piatrak in 2018. Independent and concurrent to our work, Blocky et al. also managed to give the post-quantum security proof of the pure step scheme. However, their proof is tailored to the specific problem, whereas our framework is generally more applicable into various example problems. Also, to understand their proof, a certain amount of Quantum information science is required, while assuming our framework is correct, verifying our proof is just a matter of purely classical reasoning. So next, let's talk about the lazy sampling technique. Uh, it is useful for analyzing um, hard problems in the random oracle model. So instead of Sampling the entire hash function, uh, the random oracle function, at the beginning, we use a database to simulate a random oracle. The database is initially empty, and whenever an entry being queried, we sample the fresh randomness for that entry. Formally, uh, the database is a partial function with augmented value, but and after Q queries, there will be no more than Q non-empty entries within the database. 
for analyzing the zero primitive problem, an important observation is that if there's no zero within the database DQ, then the adversary is unlikely to output one zero primitive neither. Because his best guess is some input that is not recorded within the database. But this will success with probability no more than the exponentially small error bound. Formally, we can write this down as in following probability bounds. Putting this into the quantum settings, it is a way to understand Zendry's compressed oracle technique in the sense that now the database state are in a quantum state and whenever an entry being queried, we are essentially apply uh, the compressed oracle onto the quantum state of the database. Formally, the state of database is now in a superposition of partial functions with no more than Q non-empty entries after Q queries. Uh, so here, similar observation applies. If we can, uh, if there is no zero within the database DQ, uh, which is obtained by measuring the database state after Q queries, then the adversary is unlikely to output one zero primitive neither. Except here, the error, error bound is slightly different. Although this simulation is not obvious, it is a way to understand Zendry's compressor oracle technique. And notice that now we have reduced the probability of adversary finding a zero per image into the probability of database having a zero within some of its entry. But how do we bound this desired probability? Uh, next, let's uh, see the classical analysis of zero primitive problem and keep in mind that our goal is to eventually lift them into the quantum proof using our framework. We have two observations. First, we observe that if after uh, Q queries, sequential queries, the database acquired a zero within some of its entries, then the zero must occur within one of the Q sequential queries. We can therefore bound the desired probability by summing together this bracket notation we called the transition capacities, which is simply the maximal probability database shifting from not having a zero within some of its entry to having a zero. And second, we observe that if after one parallel query, the database acquire a zero within some of its entry, then that zero must occur within one of the queried entries. Putting things all together, we can now bound the, the desired probability database having a zero. For the second observation, we are using the terminology that the transition of database shifting from not having a zero within some of its entry to having a zero is strongly recognizable by local properties zero. And here we refer to the database property zero being local because it only depends on one entry of the queried database. Putting things into a higher level, we obtain the following recipe. First, we de decompose the desired probability of database into some of transition capacities. And second, we bound the transition capacities by the probability of local properties that recognize the transition. And in our framework, we use pretty much the same recipe <coughs> except now we are in the quantum settings, so different definition of transition capacities and correspondingly adjusted formulas to bound these transition capacities and probabilities. <clears throat> so similarly, first 
we decompose the desired probability into sum of transient capacities. And second, we uh, recycle probability bounds from classical analysis and plug in into our formulas to obtain quantum transition to obtain bound for quantum transition capacities. We uh, also, in case of weaker notion of recognizability, provide correspondingly a different formulas. But the point here is it also just a matter of recycling probability bound from classical analysis and plugging into our formulas to obtain quantum bound. Now, back to the zero primitive example. We can finally, using our recipe to lift our classical analysis of zero primitive problem into the quantum analysis. So first, we recycle local properties and probability from classical analysis. And then we, re we plug in the pro probability into our formulas to obtain quantum bound for the transient capacities. Summing together these transient capacities, we obtain a square root probability bound for the database having a zero within some of its entry. <coughs> Finally, by Zendry's compressorical lemma, we obtain the probability database, oh, the probability adversary finding a zero primage with only an exponentially small error term. The point here is we don't need to understand the definition of transient capacities we can simply lift the classical proof into quantum proof using our framework. By using the same recipe, we obtain several additional results. This includes a better bound for a clinician finding problem and also a new bound for the Q chain finding problem. It is also worth mentioning that our improved bound for collision finding problem is in fact sharp in the sense that we can parallelize a BHT collision finding algorithm and the success probability will meet our asymptotic upper bound. The main application of our framework uh, is that we prove the post-quantum security of the non-interactive variant of the PSW scheme or the proof of sequential work scheme constructed by Cohen and Piatrak in 2018. So the proof of sequential work scheme is a cryptographic primitive that is interesting in the context of blockchain, uh, in which a prover interact with a verifier and we want to force the prover to do a lot of sequential computational work in order to convince the verifier. Well, assuring the verification process is logarithmically fast. So at the bottom level of the PSW scheme constructed by Cohen and Piatrak is a so-called PSW graph which is simply a Merkle tree with additional red edges as you can see in the following figures. So we are essentially forcing the prover to compute labeling on each of the vertex within the PSW graph which will require a lot of sequential computational work. So for each vertex, the label of it is computed by the hash of the, labeling, uh, the labels of its incoming vertices. In case of internal vertices, it is as if computing the labeling on, in the Merkle tree. And for leaf vertices, uh, we are essentially 
essentially compute the labeling from the hash of vertices from the red edges. For example, if we want to compute the label L11, we need to compute hash of the label L0 and L10 as they are from the red edges connected to L11. So next, let's see the PSW scheme. Uh, we talk about the interactive variant here, but we can also non-interactivize this by Fiat-Schmier transform, uh, which is the target we analyze in our paper. So first, the prover compute the entire labeling on the PSW graph and return the root label to the verifier. And second, the verifier will challenge the prover to open several random leaves of the PSW graph. Correspondingly, the prover will respond the authentication path of challenged leaves. At the end, the verifier will only need to check consistency of these opened uh, labeling on the leaves, uh, on the authentication path. For analysis, the intuition is as, as follows. Since we have collision and pre-image resistance, once the root label is sent to the verifier, the entire labeling of the tree is fixed. And if there are too many cheating leaves on the PSW graph, then it is easily caught by the opening process of the Merkle tree. But if there is only few cheating leaves, then there is a, head, a long hash chain going through most of the vertices within the PSW graph. Uh, for example, you can see the following figure. If the prover cheats on these two red vertices, then the green hash chain will go through the rest of the vertices. Therefore, by the previously mentioned hash chain bound, this will, this will require a lot of uh, sequential computational work. As, you, uh, as we can see, uh, in this analysis, we need to consider intertwined core problems such as collision finding problem, pre-image finding problem, and also hash chain finding problem. In order to deal with this mix of problems, uh, the situation is more complicated and we cannot simply apply previous recipe. Uh, we need rules to decompose these complicated transition capacities about the intertwined core problems into simpler forms. That's why we are giving calculus for transition capacities. This includes some basic rules to manipulate the capacities. Uh, for example, the capacities are symmetric, and whenever encountering union properties, we have something like quantum union bound, and also lower bound for that. When we encounter intersection of database property, we also have bound for that. These are relatively intuitive and we also have more involved uh, calculus rules to manipulate the transition capacities. Uh, the pattern here is this allows us to work with the transition capacities on an abstract level without understanding the definition of transition capacities. And we can by means of uh, these rules these calculus rules 
to decompose the transition capacities uh, that captures the security of previously mentioned PSW scheme into simple form and from which we can apply the previously mentioned recipe for the rest of our analysis. Finally, let's recap on our contribution. We offer a useful framework that whenever applicable help us prove query complexity bound in the parallel query quantum random oracle model. And this works by classical, a purely classical reasoning that lift uh, classical proofs into quantum proofs. For demonstration, we apply our framework into various example problems, including recovering known results and also find new bounds. Finally, we encourage the audience to refer to our paper for more detail and thanks for listening.